Hey, thanks for watching another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today we're going to be talking about metal fabrication. I got 10 carts to build. I took on a metal fab job, and they look something like this. They're for hauling around uh, airplane parts and this bunch of PVC stacked in there, just a simple uh, framed up cart. Stainless steel angle iron on the lid with a sheet metal and an inch and a half square tubing, some casters and a handle, and some uh, 3 8 solid round to hold the parts in, and that's about it. But there's 10 of them, so I need... I need something to save me some time, and this is it. Today's video is sponsored by Stronghand, and I'm very proud to say that because I really like their stuff. Uh, it's good, it's innovative, and it's affordable. And here I've got the, the tooling package that's available that goes, uh, that goes along with this thing that works well with this table. And um, it's going to help me fit this thing together and save me bunches and bunches of time. The job's going to go together really well. Now I've got all this stuff, all the tooling laid out here, and I found this to be really, really beneficial, uh, just giving me ideas, because when I've got it all in front of me like this, in, in just no time at all, I've got a good idea, and I've got a plan of action, and I can see exactly what's going to work to clamp what, and I get I get to roll them. There's no head scratching and uh, you know no long pauses and dead time. Just uh, It's really helpful to have it all out there. So in no time flat, I had a little setup here to weld the, the side panels in. Now this thing's going together with just square cuts, no miters on the end because all the ends are hidden with uh, casters and, and pads under one end and then the lid on the top, it's much easier just to cut square cuts here. But getting that first 90 degree angle with a table like this with these holes indexed at 90 degrees is a piece of cake. You just put some stops in one straight line and then some stops 90 degrees and you got your first angle. The stops here just have holes in them so there's very little play. And one thing I found extremely helpful is these little spring-loaded stops here. That was a huge time saver. It's got a little beveled uh, spring-loaded plunger button kind of a thingy on it. And it just puts enough pressure against the, uh, the square tubing and matches it up against the stop so you know it's always square and without having to stop and clamp it. Then the, third, the second angle, uh, you have to kind of use the slotted ones because it's not a fixed distance, you know. You can slide these along, but, but the way to do that was just square one end up. I use a bigger square than this to get it square, but um, just square it up, clamp it down, and then slide the stops up to it and lock them down with the Allen wrench, and then you have your second angle in. So two angles is all I'm needing today because this thing, I'm not putting the lid on it just because it needs to be painted first, and we're going to put the lid on last. These little eccentric stops here are very handy because you have a good little stroke on there. You can get anything lined up however you need it. And then I just use a combination of all the different kind of slotted stops, eccentric stops, and, and whatnot. And I'm just going to hold these uh, flat, these uh, round bars with one hand while I tack them with the other. That's going to be the fast way to do these. I don't want to, you know, have 20 different clamps holding all this stuff down. I would if I needed to, but they're laying right flat against the table, and just with a little hand pressure, that's going to be the easy way to do it. It's just I can just lay all the bars in there one at a time, push them up against the stops, and then get to tack welding. Like I said, it took me somewhere I somewhere in the neighborhood between 30 minutes and an hour to get the first setup done here for the first side. Got it all locked down and just about ready to tack weld. I offset the, uh, the slats here to give me a little bit more width. It's another option. Now, before I start tack welding, I'm going to replace this chintzy ground on the welder. Uh, welders don't come with very good grounds these days, but I'm going to replace it with this good one here. Stronghand makes that. It's got copper, a copper jaw on it, and before I put it all together, I'm going to shine up my end there and knock the oxidation off of it. I bolted the uh, crimped end onto this thing, and then it's a one-handed operation type spring-loaded clamp here, so that's kind of nice. The table slats bare metal, so I'm going to get a good ground there. All right, ready to, ready to fixture up here. See how I just popped that one in with that spring-loaded uh, stop there? And got my first angle, got it clamped down, stick the other piece of square tubing, kind of eyeball it, get it lined up flush with the end, and then start popping those pieces of round stock in place. Now, I know my square tubing is square, so I'm going to go ahead and, go ahead and uh, nail it. And then, like I said, just with one hand at a time, I'm going to put a little pressure against those stops and get tack wells on the round stock. I can feel it mash up against the, the stop, 
I've got an auto darkening helmet, which is, by the way, really helpful for jobs like this when you've got all those little stitch tacks to do. You don't have to be flipping the helmet up and down, up and down, up and down. So here's another perspective I want to show you. That's why MIG welding is so popular for fabrication, because you can use one hand to hold something with and uh, easily just prop the nozzle in a, in a little nook or cranny and uh, hit the trigger. And you got, i got it set good and hot here where I'll just get a good blast tack weld. That ground clamp really helps there, too, getting a good crisp start on those tacks. So I use the same setup. I just flipped it around, put it up where it's comfortable here, and then I'm just going to downhill these little, these little round bars in here. Again, the auto darkening helmet really is a time saver there. You see, I, before you get started, you're done here on these little welds. They're just little retaining bars to keep parts from sliding out, but they do need to be welded secure in case somebody stands on one. I welded them inside and out. And that's about that. Now, I put a timer on this thing, and it took me from literally consistently five minutes to do each one of these. 20 of these, there's 10 cards, two sides, and uh, we'll put them all together later, but five minutes. Well, it's only five minutes each. 20 of those is only about two hours worth of work. So uh, it took me longer than that, obviously, stopping the film here and there and all that, but a stack of 20 of those could be done in two hours with that fixturing, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I, there's no way I could do that uh, one-offs and anywhere near that. So uh, big, big time saver. Tomorrow we're going to stick them all together, do the fixturing for that, and uh, gradually it's turning into something. I should get here a little earlier tomorrow when it's cooler. I probably won't. I'm a slow learner. Well, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for part two when we put them all together and you can see the finished product and uh, we'll button them up.